How's it going, everybody? My name is Josh. My amateur radio call sign is KI6NAZ. We are continuing down the road of the technician license pool. This is broken up into 10 sub elements, and today we're looking at sub element five electrical principles i'm posting a link in the description for a playlist that goes through all of the sub elements and i recommend you use hamstudy.org to follow along and take practice tests those practice tests will show you where your weak spots are in the sub elements and then you can use the playlist to watch the videos to help you get the most out of your studying time in the description, I have links for everything, including my recommended books and audiobooks on Audible that can help you also flesh out the information if you learn better with books or audio, etc. But no more pretense. Let's get started because this is the longest sub element and marks the halfway point of our journey through this process. This is sub element five broken up into four sections. Question alpha one, electrical current is measured in which of the following units? And we go over the right answers only. So you spend time focusing on that and back and getting the background on those things instead of researching the wrong answers, which uh, could make things confusing for when those right questions get asked and you get all thrown off the, the track. So anyway, the answer for this one is D, amperes. That is the measurement we use for electrical current. Alpha zero two, electrical power is measured in which of the following units? Electrical power, and it's measured in B, watts. Alpha zero three, what is the name of the flow of electrons in an electrical circuit? And the answer is D, the current. Alpha zero four, what are the units of electrical resistance? That is C, ohms. This is uh, very important for electronics, but also very important when you talk about your antenna, which is considered a part of the circuit. Alpha zero four, what is the electrical term for the force that creates electron flow? And that is A, voltage. Alpha zero six, what is the unit of frequency? And that is hertz. So we measure things, we say kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, but it's all just based on the hertz. Alpha zero seven, why are metals generally good conductors of electricity? And the answer is B, they have many free electrons. Alpha zero eight, which of the following is a good electrical insulator? And it is B, glass. The rest of them make good antenna or conductors, not good insulators. Alpha zero nine, which of the following describes alternating current? And it is C, current that alternates between positive and negative directions. You get the idea. Alpha 10, which term describes the rate at which electrical energy is used? And that is C, power. Alpha 11, what type of current flow is opposed by resistance? And this is D, all of these choices are correct. A, direct current, B, alternating current, and C, RF current. So all of these choices. Alpha 12, what describes the number of times per second that an alternating current makes a complete cycle? And the answer is its frequency. Yeah, there you go, complete circuit of switching from positive to negative. So that's uh, section alpha. That is like the baseline of kind of electronics and some of the ideas and particularly the measurements and nomenclatures we use when talking about such things. Section B is electrical principles, math for electronics, conversion of electrical units and decibels. All right, Bravo 01. How many milliampers is 1.5 amperes? And the answer to this is 1500 milliampers. So this is a movement of the decimal point. Uh, when you use that to move around, that is going to change how you look at or how you name the measurement in amperes, in this case, milliamps. Bravo 02, which is equal to 1 million hertz? And the answer is A, 1500 kilohertz. This is now moving in, moving the zeros around. Bravo zero three, which is equal to one kilovolt? C, 1,000 volts. Bravo zero four, which is equal to one microvolt? And that is A, one one millionth of a volt. 
which is equal to 500 milliwatts? The answer is B, 0.5 watts. Bravo 06, which is equal to 3,000 milliamperes? And the answer is D, 3 amperes. So we're playing around with zeros and the different uh, variations to that, which all is important. Um, you're going to use a lot of that when you start playing around with kits or looking at different components of electronics. But sometimes it also affects your frequency control, and that's where question Bravo 07 comes in, which is equal to 3.525 megahertz. And the answer here is C, 3,525 kilohertz. Again, playing with the decimal point after moving it uh, three digits over. Bravo 08, which is equal to 1 million picofarads, farads, farads, <laughs> B, 1 microfarad. Bravo 09, which decibel value most closely represents a power increase from 5 to 10 watts? And that is B, 3 dB. So you doubled the watts, basically, and you get 3 dB, and that translates to half an S unit, which is another measurement we often use in amateur radio. Bravo 10, which decibel value closely represents a power decrease from 12 watts to 3 watts? And the answer is C, 6 dB. And dB is a representation of decibel. Bravo 11, which decibel value represents a power increase from 20 watts to 200 watts? And that is A, 10 dB. Bravo 12, which is equal to 28,400 kilohertz. That is within the amateur radio technician band frequency allocations, and it is D, 28.400 megahertz, which is really smack dab in the middle of technician privileges on the 10 meter band, which is equal to 2,425 megahertz. And the answer to that is C, 2.425 gigahertz. Again, decimal place moved up three, so now you are at gigahertz. That is section B. There are 50 questions in sub-element five, which makes it the largest, but it's the one that seems to have the most rote memorization, particularly when we're talking about the, um, the different measurements for power, uh, decibels, that whole thing. All right, so section C, question one, what describes the ability to store energy in an electrical field? And that is the capacitance. So if you think of a capacitor, what is it doing? It's temporarily, at least under load, storing electrical energy. Charlie 02, what is the unit of capacitance? And the answer is the farad. Charlie 03, what describes the ability to store energy in a magnetic field? And that is inductance, and the component associated with inductance is an inductor, which is generally like a coil of wire or something along those lines. Charlie 04, what is the unit of inductance? And the answer is C, the Henry. Because of course it is. Charlie 05, what is the unit of impedance? We've already saw this earlier, so they're driving this question home. It is the ohm. Charlie 06, what does the abbreviation RF mean? And the answer is A, radio frequency signals of all types. Radio frequency is the answer specifically. Charlie 07, what is the abbreviation of megahertz? And it is D, and they want you to be specific with the capitalization here. A capital M, capital H, and lowercase z, all next to each other. Megahertz. Hertz is a last name, so mega, capital M, hertz, capital H, and then the z. Charlie 08, what is the formula used to calculate electrical power, represented as P, in a DC circuit? And it is P is equal to I times E. So I'm sure I'm showing that on the screen right now because you need to remember it in that format. How much power is delivered by a voltage of 13.8 volts DC and a current of 
10 amperes. 13.8 is what we most often use in ham radio, so these, this is apropos. And the answer is 338 watts, which is basically a multiplication of that previous equation. And that's the number you would get if you took the equation from the previous question. That's your answer is 138 watts. Charlie 10, how much power is delivered by a voltage of 12 volts DC and a current of 2.5 amps? The answer here is 30. Again, that answer is solved by multiplying 12 by 2.5. Charlie 11, how much current is required to deliver 120 watts at a voltage of 12 volts? Do the reverse. 12, 120 divided by 12 gives you the answer of B, 10 amperes. Charlie 12, what is impedance? And the answer is A, the opposition to AC current flow impedance. Charlie 13, what is the abbreviation of the kilohertz? This is also very important that you get the capitalization correct. This is a lowercase k, an uppercase h, and a lowercase z or z. Flying right through this. Now we are on section D to wrap things up. There are four sections. This is particularly talking about Ohm's law series and parallel circuits. Delta zero one, what formula is used to calculate current in a circuit represented as I equals E divided by R? Delta zero two, what formula is used to calculate voltage in, circ in a circuit? That is E is equal to I times R. Delta zero three, what formula is used to calculate resistance in a circuit? This is Ohm's law in a nutshell. If you have ever seen the, the circle that is Ohm's law, you can figure out what any of the things you need to do is by covering your finger over one of the spots of the circle. So if you wanted to measure for the resistance, you'd cover up the R with your finger, and then it just becomes E divided by I. And that's all there is to it. If you literally just remember that in your head, you can pretty much solve most of these problems in section D. Delta zero four, what is the resistance of a circuit in which a current of three amperes flows when connected to 90 volts? And that is going to be volts over amperes. So it is divided, which is 90 over three, which gives the answer B. 30 ohms. What is the resistance of a circuit for which the applied voltage is 12 volts and the current flow is 1.5 amperes? This gives you the answer of C, 8 ohms, which is 12 divided by 1.5 amps. What is the resistance? Delta 06, what is the resistance of a circuit that draws 4 amperes from a 12 volt source? The answer is A, 3 ohms dividing 12 by four. Delta zero seven, what is the current in a circuit with an applied voltage of 120 volts and a resistance of 80 ohms? The answer is D 1.5 amperes. Delta zero eight, what is the current through a 100 ohm resistor connected across 200 volts? That is going to be volts over ohms to give you a result of C, two amps. Delta zero nine, what is the current through a 24 ohm resistor connected across 240 volts? So that would be volts divided by the resistance, 24 ohms, which gives you C, 10 amperes. Delta 10, what is the voltage across a two ohm resistor if a current of 0 0.5 amps flows through it? Again, two ohms over 0.5 amps is going to yield, and that is A, one volt. Delta 11, what is the voltage across a 12 ohm resistor if a current of one amps flows through it? The answer is B, 10 volts. What is the voltage across a 10 ohm resistor if a current of two amperes flows through it? And that is 10 ohms multiplied by two amps, which gives you a result of D, 20 volts. Delta 13, in which type of circuit is DC current the same through all components? That is A, series. Delta 14, in which type of circuit is voltage the same across 
all components and that is B parallel. So that is sub element five. It can be a bit tricky if you're going into it with not really any desire to learn the Ohm's law, but I promise you it's really, really easy to just understand that circle and work your way through it. There's very little to it. Uh, you can remember it really easy. In fact, you could, if you bring scratch paper or if, you, um, if you're given scratch paper or if you're testing online, uh, you can ask beforehand if you can have that symbol or you can just draw it on something and then you know you'll have it there um, i don't want to lead anybody wrong make sure you ask the test takers before you do any of this but if you can remember in your head which i don't think is that difficult to do you can solve most of these and being that this is a multiple choice test you're really always able to narrow things down to two right selections just about any time so you should be good to go. So that wraps up sub element five, the longest sub element, but also I think one of the ones that's the easiest to study for, and then you just be able to ace that sub element without much issue. Reminder, make sure you're using hamstudy.org. The practice tests you take there over time will show you where your weak spots are, and then you can use these videos to help you gain some extra information and study a little bit more and get your license even faster. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Links for everything is in the description. So if you'd like to follow along with all of these sub element videos, there's a handy little playlist as well as a playlist that's right on my channel that says, are you new to ham radio? Click here and it'll walk through many of my videos that I've done. The trick to that is go through the list, find something you're interested in, click play, and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about our wonderful hobby. I am Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you later. See ya.